Hi, how's it going? I guess it's a uh, kind of good evening. I to have a little chat about uh, test leads. Test leads for your voltmeter to be more specific. Uh, one of the reasons I'm chit-chatting about this is a good friend of mine got uh, hurt today. And uh, I went over to uh, see how he was doing and he was showing me the test leads he was using and for uh, for purposes uh, insurance purposes um, he uh, wouldn't let me run away with them and that's fine basically the leads he was using were supplied by the company and uh, the company got sold some copy or fake leads or you know kind of reproduction leads they're not at all rated at uh, what it says on them and uh, I think somebody's in big trouble. Nowadays, test leads for your voltmeter, you know, actually, test leads for your voltmeter have always been very important. Um, without them, you know, you might as well just throw your voltmeter in the trash. And a lot of them nowadays are what they call safety leads. They have, uh, you know, like this set here. They have shrouds on them. You know, you can't, the old test leads, this would have been all exposed. and was potentially a bit hazardous like here's an end and when you plug these two together um, there is no way you're well not no way but there it is highly limited that you're going to get hurt and most new probes nowadays have a little tiny area the old probes that yeah, was all exposed uh, how he got hurt was the the insulation on the test leads was not rated it for what they claimed like this one here this is a probably a crummy Chinese knockoff, and it's rated at uh, 10 amp at 1,000 volts. Yeah, me and my Megger have a probably a different theory there. Now, these this kind of stuff is is plentiful and cheap, and probably okay for the average guy in the street just doing some automotive stuff or maybe a little uh, work around the house with some normal AC voltages. When you start getting above, uh, in my book, above 500 volts, you better know what's going on. And there's a lot of, uh, there, there's some clever styles, but, uh, you know, all these, you know, like here, they say 10 amp. Well, this is, I think, 18 gauge wire, or at least it says it is. It says it's rated at 2,000 volts. Well, you know, the manufacturers can put anything on there. Just because it says that doesn't mean it's true. And you, if you're really going to use this where it might be critical, you may want to test that. This is kind of a clever in because it has a kind of a banana type plug which is funny because it sort of defeats the uh, the safety feature I guess although it does have a shroud so you can get it down to just the point there there's another one I think these were a set of these was a dollar and these are rated at 10 amp everybody just nobody tests this stuff they just put that on there that rating on there and I'm not sure what you do with these plugs other than maybe w when you're going to use them you, you you hook them up and you plug that in before you hook them up it, I don't know it doesn't make any sense to me there's another one that you know that used to be the way most old probes are but you know I was making these safer 30 years ago I mean all you had to do is get across something one time and blow your probe up to realize you needed some heat shrink on there. Now some clever knuckleheads in marketing, you know, they put this on there and say it's safer. You know, don't rely on things to make you safe. Rely on you to make yourself safe. Use your brain. Uh, personally... I like the old test leads. They were just heavy-duty rubber with actual wire in them, not some mysterious crap. Most of these were rated at several you know, kilovolts. And they were uh, actually made out of, you know, that's a, a Muller-type clip. Actually, a good rule of thumb is um, don't buy any test leads that the manufacturer can't provide a data sheet on. So that leaves out probably about 90% of the test leads on the market. Guess what? eBay just went down to probably about three sets of test leads instead of 30 million. Um, I can only think of 
three manufacturers, and that doesn't mean there are, aren't more than three. I can only think of three right off the bat that I've ever seen data sheets on, which is, uh, I believe it's Mueller or Mueller, uh, Pomona, and Fluke. And that's about it. And it's kind of scary because I've seen knockoff copies of Fluke leads. Actually, you really want a set of test leads. Uh, go make them. Go buy some real plugs and buy some uh, decent... Uh, you can buy decent silicone braided wire in any length you want. And it's relatively inexpensive. About 90% of my test leads are... Look at the test leads instead of the other junk there. Um, about 90% of my test leads are homemade test leads. And they're good to several kilovolt. And very seldom do they ever see any, you know, rough voltage like that. The test leads I've got that I do use at high voltages are uh, actually double insulated that I made. And then they're uh, carefully... Uh, strain relieved and they're also carefully tested once a year and they're also carefully stored and put away they don't see any grease or oil or contamination or chemicals um, and there's a pretty clever little label on the box that says high voltage test leads only and they're treated uh, like the tool that they are you know they're treated with a lot of respect so I guess I'm uh, Go visit my friend a few days in the hospital. You got uh, not a not a life threatening injury, but he got hurt, which isn't cool. And uh, I'm glad that somebody um, overseas and somebody that imports this junk locally made a couple dollars at the expense of somebody's uh, safety and health. Take it easy. Have a good day.